Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cardwell's Cauldrons here. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today on Geetopia Land, we are bringing you a weird, fun, just out of the weirdness deck here. And it's called Guilds Unite. But before that, we'd like to go ahead and remind you that we did start up a Patreon. So if you'd like to go ahead and support us, just click the link down below and uh, hopefully let us evolve and, you know, do all the cool, better stuff that we can for you. Yep, yep. All right, like I said, Guilds Unite, it's, it's kind of a five color semi deck, it's weird. But the main reason for it is Thrawn's Temporal Gateway. I want to use this and I wanted Ghost Daddy to be in this deck <laughs> so I can just flash him out, but not going to happen, right? No, no I'm going to be dead and Kyra has to be crappy. <laughs> but anyways, if you don't know what Thrawn's Temporal Gateway is, it's a four drop artifact, legendary, you can pay for, tap it. You may put a historic permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. And if you forgot what that is from Dominary, because it was so long ago. <laughs> historic means artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. So, what are legendary? Planeswalkers. Yay! Pretty much. But we do have some normal creatures out there as well. Which will help us hopefully get there. Yeah. The first one we got is Joyra, the Weatherlight Captain. Yep. She's a red, blue, and two for a 3-3 three, three human artificer. Whenever you cast a historic spell, draw a card. So what's your doing? Done. Yep. So you play a dude with, with uh. Well, I you think have to play a dude on this because it's when you cast a story yeah, yeah. spell. This one, so this but is like okay. if you don't have a gateway or if they get rid of it, you can still get off like stuff off of her. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Although you think with the weather like Captain and the picture shows she's in the weather light, she would have flying. But you would think nitpick it's okay. whatever creatures with wings. Anyways, the next one, of course, Lyra Dawnbringer, because why not have a f flash? Angel. Yeah. Three, two white, five, five, flying, first strike, lifelink. You know this lady. Other angels control get plus one, plus one, have lifelink, but that's not going to matter in this one. Yeah, she's just so good. Yeah. Just, yeah, I'll take a five, five, flying, lifelink, first strike, yeah. all day. Next up is Niv Mizzet, the Perrin. He's three blue and three red for a five, five, flying Dagron. Spell, this spell can be countered. When you draw a card, he deals one damage to any target, and when you cast an, or when an A player casts an instant or sorcery, you draw a card. Yep. So everyone knows this guy by now. He's super awesome. He's super powerful. Maybe in the next set he'll get banned. I don't know. We'll see. Because yeah, he's kind of just he's everywhere. Just because he's really, so, really good. He's just so good. Yeah, just he so does good. it a lot. Surprised he hasn't showed up more because of Mono Blue is just taking over the, you know, the system by now. Yeah. All right. The next one, Treasure Map, of course, because if you're almost five colors, you need some fixing. So two drop artifact. One tap. Scry one. Pull a landmark counter on it on treasure mac and if there's three or more landmark counters remove them flip it and then you get three treasure tokens which treasure token tap sack add a mana of any color now with it flipping it becomes treasure cove a land uh tap add a, a waste to your mana pool or tap sacrifice a treasure draw a card done it's the card's so good just because it it gives you mana yep. or it lets you scry and it essentially gives you a mana with the treasures, and then you get to draw cards later. Exactly. And it's a historic card, because it's an artifact, so it yeah. works out. Uh, next up is just some control to help you get there, and it's Absorb. Yep. Blue, blue, and white for counter target spell, you gain three life. So, like, you're, if you're going to have Gateway, you're going to need instant speed something to make them scared to play anything. So you're going to be like, oh, you didn't do anything? Okay, instant speed, bam. You didn't miss it. Done. The next one, Dovin Bond, Dovin Grand Arbiter, not Dovin Bond, no one cares about that guy. <laughs> one, white and blue, three, loyalty, Planeswalker. You plus one, until end of turn, whenever a creature would deal combat damage to a player, you put a loyalty counter on him. Meh. What we're really going to use him for is protection. So, minus one, uh, create a one one thought, color slopter artifact creature with flying, you gain one life. And then, if you get there, plus uh, or minus seven, you like the top ten cards in the library, put three of them in your hand, and then the rest of the bottom of a random order. So, meh, meh. That's not that bad, not that great, but you're just making dudes, really. Yeah, not that bad. Yeah. Next up is Karn, Scion of Urza, four colorless for a five drop, for a five loyalty planeswalker. Yep. Plus one, reveal the top two cards of your library. Your opponent separates, chooses one, and they put it underneath with a silver counter on it. Or they, they choose one that goes in your hand, and the other gets exiled with a silver counter. Yep. Um, and then minus one, you put a card with a silver counter on it into your hand. Or minus two, you create a construct, which is power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts you control. Yep. And with a treasure map, 
Dovin Bond ones and the other planeswalkers and stuff, you can probably beat them out with this artifact, Karn, the Karnstruct, yeah. as we like to call it. Because it's just so s strong and good. Yeah, it just gets there. All right. The next one, Vraska, Golgari Queen. Two black and green, four loyalty planeswalker. She's so hard to deal with if she gets a stick. Plus two. You may sacrifice another permanent. If you do, you gain one life, draw a card. You don't have to do it. You can just do plus two and be good. Minus three, destroy target non-land permanent with converted mana cost three or less. Tasty. And then minus nine, you get emblem that says whenever your creature deals combat damage to a player, you phase them. They lose the game. Yeah. And she gives player death touch to all your dudes. Yeah, pretty much. Which is super it's pretty cute. silly. Next up is Cleansing Nova. It's two white and three. For choose one, choose destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Yep. If you notice, like we said, it's all a bunch of Planeswalker Guild leaders coming together, so you just rush this out as soon as possible as you feel like it. Yeah. Destroy all dudes. <clears throat> the next one is Rao. Is it a Viceroy? Three, blue and a red. Five, loyalty. Plus one. Look at the top two cards of your library. You put one in your hand and one in the, li in the graveyard. You minus three. You basically beacon both them, so you... Deal damage equal to a target creature for how many instruments of sorceries you have in your graveyard. And then, of course, if you minus eight, then you get an emblem that says whenever you cast a instant of sorcery, it deals four damage to any target, and you draw two cards. Yeah. His emblem, if it happens, it, Just, it will end the game quickly. Yeah. Either by you decking yourself or you actually getting to kill them. The dude's just silly. Like, like I've seen him do so much. Oh, yeah. Next up is Tezzeret, the Artifice Master. He is 5 mana, 2 blue and 3 for 5 loyalty. Plus 1, you create a 1 1 th Thopter with flying. 0, you draw a card. If you control 3 or more artifacts, you draw. F draw 2. Draw 2 cards instead. Yeah. And then minus 9, you get an emblem at the beginning of your end step. Search your library for a permanent card and put it in your, into the battlefield, then shuffle your deck. So, yeah, that's pretty good. That's just more win more, though. If you get to 9, you're just like, alright. Every turn, there's a Planeswalker. God, yeah, God, that's pretty God, silly. God. Now, to help this, because I want to use this card so bad, and no one else is, uh, Yogmoth's Yog Vile Offering. It's four and a black legendary sorcery, so in able to cast it, you have to have a legendary creature or Planeswalker in the field, so hopefully you got that covered. Put up to one target creature or Planeswalker card from the graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Then, destroy up to one target creature or Planeswalker. Exile this. So hopefully you can just kill whatever you need to Dude, and you get a silly, man. It's so powerful. But of course the legendary sorcery rule makes it extremely hard. Yeah. And that's why you only have one in the deck because, you know, the test it out and such. Next up is the tech with a Thran Temporal Gateway. Oh, yep. And it catches a lot of people off guard. But it is in Bolus's clutches. It's two blue and four. Uh, Enchanted Permanent, you control Enchanted Permanent. Enchanted Permanent is legendary. Yep. And the reason why, of course, this is super secret tech is the it's a historic card because it is a legendary enchantment. Yeah. And the gateway says permanent, historic permanent. So you're just like flash in. That's mine. Yeah, it's it's super good. Just I've whenever I used to play t temporal temporal gateway, I flashed this in on a Teferi when they were about to pop it. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, cool, I want your ult, thanks. And they were just like, well, what? Huh? What? What just what? happened? Yeah. You're like, no. Yeah, this is mine. Sorry. Yeah, thanks. it's pretty silly. And to round out everyone is Veraska Relic Seeker, because she is also extremely good. Yeah. Four black, green, six loyalty, plus two. Put a 2-2 two, two black pirate creature token on the battlefield. Minus three, destroy target, artifact, creature, cham it. Create a colorless treasure artifact with a, you know, treasure you tap sack add for mana. And then minus ten, target player's life becomes one. She's so good. She's so good. She's super good. Yeah, this Braska is so it's is worth every bit of six mana just because every single sec. Because you're like minus three kill that whatever. It literally kills everything that you needed to kill. Minus a plane blogger. And you get mana for it. Yeah. It's just silly. Yeah, she does a lot of work. Now, of course people will probably complain, it was like, where's the Teferi? Well, screw Teferi. We're not gonna run that guy. He's too powerful, and we're <laughs> trying to find other ways around him. Plus, he's kind of a good guy, right? He's a hero. Yeah. So screw him. As you notice, most of all the Planeswalkers are from the Griggs Nicobolus control. Yeah. But with that, of course, with the lands, we have 24. It's a hodgepodge. Not sure what works, what yet. Haven't put it together. But we got Cliff Top Retreat, Drowned Catacomb, Glacial Fortress, Hollowed Fountain, Rootbound Crag, Sacred Foundries, Steam Vents, 
Sulphur Falls, Sun Petal Grove, and Woodland Cemetery. Now it's super weird because we only have two cards, the Veraskas that are black and green, but they're just powerful enough. And hopefully you don't need them that much because you can just gateway them in. Yeah. Because we have four of those, because we might as well, right? Because they're going to be destroyed or taken care of somehow or another. Yeah, the, the lands seem a bit off, but I mean, with buddy lands and shock lands everywhere, it's really not that big of a yeah, deal. Yeah, everyone's doing it, right? Yeah. Everyone. Might as well. <laughs> but that's it for the deck, guys. Of course, it's called Guilds Unite, and if you need the list, it'll be down below. And hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island. Goodbye. Bye. Also, guys, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all of our future content, make sure you tap that bell. And go ahead and check us out on our streams. Don't forget to support us on Patreon, and thank you for staying here on the island. Later, guys. Bye.